everybody, and welcome in to HGAM Sports Talk. I am your host, Tom Nappy, and joining us on the show today, we have Andy Barron from MyFM 101.3. We have Jared Keene from the Metro West Daily News, and we might have Kevin Stone from the New England Football Journal. We'll wait and see on that one, but... In any case, we have a lot to talk about, and of course, uh, a big part of today's show is going to be all about the NFL draft, the Patriots being aggressive as they were in free agency, and we'll get into all the moves they made and uh, talk about the overall uh, atmosphere of the draft and stuff like that. But first, we want to inform you about our upcoming Hopkinton Hillers broadcast schedule. So as you could probably imagine, this show's pre-recorded since on Wednesday, which will be today when you're watching this show, at 3.45 p.m., we'll have Hillers Baseball and Softball versus Ashland. Those games are very much weather pending. A lot of rain is expected to move in. They'll likely be on the turf field if they do play. The grass field is probably just going to be too wet. But big question marks about today's game. So uh, uh, stay tuned and locked in to our HCAM website and social media pages uh, for any postponement announcements. Also, Thursday, May 6th, Hiller's boys lacrosse game against Ashland has been postponed. That game will take place later in the season. Uh, Monday, May 10th at 3.45 p.m., we're hoping for some better weather because we got three scheduled games that day. We have Hiller's girls lacrosse versus Westwood. And we have Hillers baseball and softball versus Medfield. So three games that you can catch on the HCAM channels and our YouTube page. And then on Tuesday, May 11th, we have the Hillers boys and girls track meets versus Ashland at 3.45 p.m. And of course, stay tuned to our website and social media pages. A lot of questionable weather in the area the next couple of weeks. And... As usual, in early spring, you never know when it's going to rain. So some of these games are likely going to be get uh, be getting moved around. So we're hoping to get them in. We're hoping not too many will be moved around. But obviously, it's New England. It's unpredictable. So stay tuned to our website and social media pages. Well, there you have it. The Hopkins and Hiller's upcoming schedules. Uh, Andy, Jared, how you guys doing? Doing well, Tom. Uh, how about yourself? Does Kevin don't want to come on because the Patriots drafted Mac Jones? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think he doesn't want to admit he was wrong. I'm just... uh, I, I think that's why. I called that. Hey, I, I, called I was that. wrong too. I was wrong too, and I'm still here. So yeah. <laughs> well, you're a man of integrity. Yeah. Touche. Touche. Yeah. Hey, you know it's. Um, yeah, what a week it was for the Patriots. I tell you, they've uh, they're they're definitely dominating the. Uh, the news stories right now and and they should because honestly the first time in a long time i think you have to give them an a in this draft i mean definitely absolutely yeah first time in a long time they used all their picks they didn't trade down at all they traded up in fact and i thought they really uh, approached positions that they desperately needed i was thrilled that they got a quarterback in the first round i thought that's what they would do because after last year, I think it's very clear that Cam Newton may not be your guy and you should definitely give him some competition. Uh, and you got a quarterback that could perhaps be your longtime future starter in Mac Jones. I really have a lot of faith that he could be a good quarterback in the NFL. Speaking of the Pats draft, let's take a look at picks. So in round one with pick 15, they got Mac Jones out of Alabama. Round two, they traded up with the Bengals. And they got Christian Barmore, a defensive tackle out of Bama. And then with uh, the round three pick, 96, defensive end, Ronnie Perkins out of Oklahoma. And then they got an Oklahoma teammate of Ronnie Perkins with the fourth pick, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, a running back. And then round five, they went to Michigan, picked up Cameron McGrone. And then round six, Missouri, they got uh, – I don't think this guy's related to Drew Bledsoe, but his name's Joshua Bledsoe. He's a safety. And then also in round six, offensive tackle, William Sherman out of Colorado. And then in round seven, Trey Nixon out of UCF. And I thought a common theme in this year's draft, a lot of teams went with pl uh, players on the same team in college. Like you had the Patriots go with Mac Jones and Barmore out of Bama, and then Perkins and Stevenson out of Oklahoma. Uh, there was there was a lot of teams taking that route, uh, drafting players uh, 
I think maybe a little bit based on familiarity. Jacksonville did too with Trey La- uh, Trevor Lawrence and one of his teammates from Clemson. Yeah. Right. Same thing. Yeah. I believe it was what a tackle out of Clemson yeah. that we got in the second round, which is good because the Jags certainly need uh, somebody to protect their quarterback. Well, they, they need a lot more, but yeah, they need, yeah, they I, need a lot. They need a lot. Yeah. But, but Tre- uh, Trevor Lawrence is a darn good start. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I just, doubt. I just wonder, did COVID-19 play into this draft? Is that why a lot of the teams, they went with players from the same college team? I mean, it's it's possible. You know, I mean, I think nowadays a lot has to do with COVID, you know, whether people want to admit it or not, or whether it's, you know, it's just kind of a reality. You know, a, a lot of things are being based off of COVID. And um, yeah, I mean, so I, I, I certainly think so. Yeah. Yeah, you look, you look at it too. I mean, when was the last time all these quarterbacks went this high right, i can't right. even honestly remember it's been that long i mean i i don't maybe don't follow the draft as closely as some people but you had trevor lawrence you had zach zach wilson um, trey lance trey lance, trey lance right they, they were one two three and then matt are, are some teams going to regret not taking mac jones because some other teams could have used I hope so <laughs> yeah. well i mean I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, because a lot of teams did pass up on him, but I can't see the Giants weren't going to take him. They got Daniel Jones. The Eagles were not going to take him. They have Jalen Hurts. So it just kind of seemed like all the chips fell into the Patriots' laps for the first time in a long time. But you have to wonder, did 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 the Patriots' ownership pressure them to take a quarterback? Because I'm starting to kind of – Definitely. Yeah, I think I'm starting to think they – you don't know. I mean, did Bill really want the pick? I don't know. I mean, that's, but I could definitely tell Bob Kraft when he was talking um, earlier in the week was saying how, how thrilled he was. There's no doubt about it. This was a joint decision. And if it wasn't up to Bill, I mean, who knows? But I just think, again, I told you this last week, it all starts with the quarterback. It all starts with the quarterback. We don't know if Mac Jones is going to, I mean, look, I mean, there's been number one picks that have played quarterback who have not worked out. Ryan Leaf, Rick Meyer, who could have been here in New England instead of Drew Bledsoe. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. You just don't know. But I just feel like this kid's got something. I, I, the, the stuff I've heard about him, and he's played for Alabama. I mean, he right. played for a great program. The Patriots really don't really miss a lot on these SEC guys. For some reason, they just – and we know the relationship between Belichick and Saban, but look at all the great players they had from LSU. They had Jar- – Jarvis Green, Kevin Falk. I mean, it's endless. Georgia, yeah, same I mean, thing. Well, you know, there was what, like eight Alabama guys taken in the first round? It's, it's, it's incredible. It's ridiculous. If you go to Alabama and play football, you're pretty much going to the NFL. Yeah, they're, it's like they're a minor league. They, they're like a minor league football team for the NFL. Really. Much. I was really. actually a little surprised. Speaking of Alabama, I was surprised that Jalen Waddell went before Devontae Smith. And I think yeah. the Eagles, Eagles did a great job of picking up Devontae Smith in that yeah. spot. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm but, you know, on the, topic of the, on, on the topic of Jones, I think it became more and more evident. And again, I, I mean, I said it last week that I wasn't, you know, the highest on Jones and I wasn't really sure if they were going to take a quarterback. Um, but I think once the Bears traded up to take fields, you knew there wasn't going to be a quarterback taken after that until maybe 15. Yep. And then I think, I think it kind of became evident then that, um, you know, it was looking like, you know, Jones was going to land in the Patriots lap and, um, again, I think, you know, again, I wasn't as high on Jones as some other people probably, but, um, I love the plan. Um, I think he does have, you know, certainly some potential, uh, certainly the team saw something in him. So, right. you know, yeah. I think that's, yeah. yeah, I'm sure, uh, Belichick called up his buddy, Nick Saban and said, Hey, what do you think about this guy? Should I take him or what? And they're longtime friends and Saban was probably like, Oh yeah, you're going to like what you get with, you're going to like what you're getting with this guy. I would take him. Yep. And I think he probably trusted uh, the word of Nick Saban and said, all right, we're taking him." And I thought it was good because as I've been saying for weeks and weeks, you got to give Cam Newton competition in training camp. You can't just hand him the starting job. He wasn't impressive last year. You don't know if he still has anything left in the tank. You need an option in case he doesn't. And there's a very real chance that he doesn't. And let's say Mac Jones does start. I think there's still a role for Newton. I, I think you could see him in that uh, – Saints kind of system where you know you got Newton lining up in the wildcat and doing the designed quarterback runs or you, you even spread him out as a receiver because let's not forget Cam Newton is an athletic freak so even if 
Mac Jones wins the job, which he hasn't yet. There's going to be a big training camp battle. Uh, I think there's still a role for Newton in this offense, and we know how much Belichick loves versatility. Yeah. So I it won't surprise me to see both of them out there on the field. What about Kyle Pitts going third to Atlanta? A tight end. Fourth. That's fourth. Like fourth, I'm sorry. Fourth. Yeah. Unheard of. That is like the last unreal. thing that the Atlanta needs right now. They need everything except tight end pretty much. They need – Offensive tackles, they need a defense. They have, like, no one on defense. Uh, they have decent receivers, but another offensive weapon? I mean, they've been loading up on offensive weapons for the last several years, and it really hasn't done them any Yeah, I mean, between Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, I mean, they're, you know, they're pretty stocked. And uh, But I think that shows you how much of a stud Pitts is. Yeah. You know, when you can't pass up a guy like that, knowing that you have other positions to fill and you still take him, at number right. four, yeah, I mean this this guy is going to be a, a nightmare to, to cover in the oh, NFL. I think Jared's one hundred percent right. There's just sometimes where you just like a Peyton Manning or you know a Drew Brees maybe or just you just can't pass these people up. You know what I mean? And it's just I, I think that's the case. You know, I mean, what if the Patriots had a chance to take him? They'd do it. I mean, they would have done it. But there's just some players you just you just can't. You just can't miss on, and I, I believe uh, he's one of them. Very similar to Trevor Lawrence. Yep. And you just, you know. Right. He's just Yeah. He is a freak of nature, and I'm sure Joe Burrow's pretty thrilled with what the Bengals did picking Jamar Chase. Uh, Jamar Chase, yeah. Another, another and, guy who I think is going to have an impact for sure. Yep. There it is again, the familiarity thing. Uh, picking an LSU receiver, one of the key receivers at LSU when Burrow was at LSU. Yep. Uh, and I think that was – just because they're familiar with each other. I mean, they could have taken Jalen Waddle out of Alabama, who's probably just as good, but they went chase because of the familiarity with Burrow. Uh, and I thought that's a theme that I think you're going to see quite a bit of. And I, I you know, we should, I should have done some research and uh, saw in previous drafts if this was a theme, but I certainly noticed it in this one. And, uh, also, it was pretty hysterical how nuts the Lions' uh, war room was going when they got Panay Sewell. I know the guy's going to be good. He's going to be a good tackle. But they went nuts. When they, they went crazy. That, that's but, the war room I wanted to be in. They were they having were happy. fun in there. Listen, the Lions, I mean, how many players have they drafted that they've just completely screwed up? I mean, Everybody. seriously, the only, the only <laughs> one I can think of is – that turned out was was Calvin Johnson, and uh, you know, of course, they had Barry Sanders all those years. But really, I mean, if you're a player, are you excited to be drafted by the Lions? I mean, no, but I'm sure Goff is excited because he'll have some protection at least. Protection, <laughs> definitely. And he certainly oh, needed it. Listen, guys, I I really truly believe that this draft told me one thing. We said this before we came on. This is your future New England Patriots team. There's yeah. no question about it. This is the future of this team. And it kind of feels like, are we getting back to maybe the kind of the old type of Patriots, you know, when you had Ted Washington, Teddy Bruschi, Richard Seymour, <clears throat> Ted Johnson, it kind of sort of feels like that a little bit that there's, I think it's going to be a yeah. different Patriots team because I mean, Young. they got some serious speed at receiver and free agency mm -hmm. with uh, Aguilar and Bourne. Those are two really speedy guys. Oh, yeah. They got two massive tight ends that are going to be great, Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. This is like a brand new Patriots team. Oh, uh, they're, they're putting talent on the roster. I think that was the goal going into this offseason. Just load the roster with talent. I think you're both right, though. I mean, I think, again, this is the future, and it's also kind of a new team. You know, it's it's new and it's the future. I think, um, you know, you got to kind of look at both both sides there. And I think, uh, you know, again, I, I, I like a lot of these picks and – um, you know, kind of we'll, we'll see what happens with a lot of these free agents as well. So, well, it's um, certainly exciting. That's for sure. I can tell yeah. you that, and I've said this before, but to defend this tight end set, this is going to be a nightmare matchup for some of these teams. Seriously, when you try to defend Hunter Henry and John U. Smith, you need to take them seriously. I mean, that, how are you going to stop that? Really? I mean, now you got to get a quarterback to throw him the ball, but that's a nightmare. I mean, for teams to prepare, to prepare for. Right. Just yeah. looking at their offense from last year and comparing it to this year, it is so different. It's miles different, miles better. Last year, they literally had nothing. No. 
especially after Edelman got hurt. They had nothing. This year, they're pretty loaded. <laughs> Certainly at the tight end position, but and running back too. position, they added some good weapons. Running back too. You right. Up. You're, yeah, yeah. Harris, you got yep. uh, White coming back, and you got uh, Bolden. Yep. And uh, one of the other interesting things, uh, I think the Bears are going to have the most interesting quarterback situation in the league because they got Andy Dalton, Nick Foles, and now Justin Fields. Wow. And they traded up to get Justin Fields. That's going to be a battle for that starting. Yeah, that is. Listen, the Bears have never seemed to hit a home run on a quarterback. I mean, really, when was the last time? Name one quarterback they've had. I mean – I can't even remember. Certainly not on, Mitch Trubisky. Trubisky. It was a disaster. It was horrible. <laughs> Jim McMahon was better than Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> I think I you're mean, better than Mitch Trubisky. Seriously, though, I mean, they 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 need they never have really had a legit. I mean, Rex Grossman, and they got to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Did they ever draft a quarterback this high? No, I yeah. could not. No, no, definitely not. They've never been. They've never built their team around a quarterback. It's always been defense. Defense and running games. They, they just... I, think, I think Justin Fields is a legit shot at winning that job, too. Oh, no question. Oh, definitely. Because Nick Foles is, you know, he, he had that great run in Philadelphia, and then he got hurt in Jacksonville. But, you know, and then uh, – and who's the other guy they got? Uh, Andy Dalton? I mean, yeah. come on. No. And, and they paid Andy Dalton pretty much like a starter, too. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the figure was, but they paid I... him like a starter. I don't understand it. I mean, I cannot believe that guy is still playing. Honestly. That'll be a very interesting training camp. Yeah. I mean, they're going to give those guys equal time, I think, because they don't even know who's going to start. No. Uh, you got to see if Fields is ready. I think eventually Fields will be the starter, but he might not be ready yet. It's his first year. Yep. Tough um, division, too. Yep. That's a tough division, the North. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, That's Aaron a- Rodgers wants out, so maybe it won't be that tough. But. Is he going to? I'm heard. I'm hearing rumors now. He's going to be traded to the Broncos. Like what? What's going on with this guy? This is a Who disaster. Knows? Who knows, man? At what this a disaster! Point. This is like Brett Favre all over again. Oh yeah, yeah. it really, really is. The, the way he's handling things is horrible. pretty unbelievable. If he goes to the Broncos, though, that's a, look out. He immediately oh, makes the City, Broncos relevant. They are going to challenge Kansas City if he goes there. There is no doubt about it. But, but. Do you want someone like that after the stunt he's pulling right now? If I'm John Elway, I got to think think twice here because – No, I would take him in a heartbeat. I mean, Denver hasn't been relevant for years. You, well, you get Aaron Rodgers, yeah. you're immediately relevant. Oh, and yeah. I know the guy could have an attitude and he could, you know, be an issue, but it doesn't matter. He's one of the best in the, in the, in the NFL. Yeah, you got to take him if you can. Well, if he goes there, then it's just – then just – put Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl because there's nobody in the NFC that's going to challenge them. I mean, right. really who's, who's going to, if Aaron Rodgers leaves the NFC, who's going to go ahead of Tom Brady? It's just not, it's not happening. Not happening. I, mean, I, I don't even think it's happening right now. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying it's, it's just like, I'm just stunned reading this stuff. I mean, I mean, and look, and I, and I got on Brady for the stuff he was pulling here, but it was nothing like this. I mean, yep. This is a whole other level, what Aaron Rodgers is doing. And it's going to tarnish his legacy if he, if he keeps acting like this. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I don't know. <clears throat> really don't know. Yeah. What would you guys think of the Christian Barmore pick? I like that Christian Barmore pick a lot. Good pick. I think, yeah, he's going to be, yeah. he's going to be special on the line. Definitely. Yeah, I thought that was a great pick. And great pick. if there's one thing Belichick knows in the draft, it's tackles on either side of the ball, really, but he's been pretty good at drafting defensive tackles. And um, obviously, I think uh, he probably got um, a good word from Saban about Barmore. And I'm sure he probably maybe even got a good word from Mac Jones about Barmore. But um, Mm -hmm. they needed defensive tackles. They needed to get better up front. And I think this pick is definitely going to help them do that. Yeah, you yep. put him out there with Chase Winovich, Dante Hightower, yep. Dietrich Wise, and you got Bonmore. That's he's going to do some damage. That's pretty solid, pretty yeah. solid. I mean, I might be missing a couple of guys here and there, but you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. You got a lot of this is, and I think the other thing too is this is a pretty young Patriots team too. There is yep. a lot of youth on this team, but this is going to be your team for at least the next three to four years because that's when you signed all these free agents too as well. 
Yep. So this is a pretty good indicator of what it's going to look like here the, these next few years with the Patriots. But great pick, no doubt about it. This guy has 10-inch hands. That's huge. Oh, that's massive. Six foot four, 310. Yeah. His arms are 33 and 58 inches wide. Jeez. This guy is a big man. It's huge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, I just can't wait for week one. Let's go. I mean, I'm I know. I know. Let's go. I mean, I'm so about, pumped maybe, about this year because we're about, four, we're about four months away. Patriots schedule is coming out next week. So I'll be interested to see uh, who they open up with and uh, what, you know, when that Tampa Bay game will be and all that. But right. you know, it's, it's um, we're, we're getting there and, and uh, hopefully the, the stadiums will be full. We still don't know yet, but it seems to be trending in that direction. I mean, there's going to be fans there. There's no doubt about it. We just don't oh, know, yeah. know how much, but right now it'll be you know, what 20% capacity, but, Supposedly by August, everything's supposed to be reopened. Well, at, at least that's what they're saying as of right yeah. now. So it could be a full pack stadium in August. Let me ask you great. this just real, real quick. If you got offered to go to a game and, and, and by September, would, would, would you go? Would you, would you go to a game? Patriots football? Yes, definitely. I don't care. I'm going. Do you think you're going to have to? I, I mean, I'll wear a mask. I myself, I'll wear you'll my have mask. to wear a mask. I'll wear my Patriots mask. I have there a couple of those. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, would I go to Fenway in a packed house right now? No. Would I go to the Garden? Probably not. But Gillette, absolutely. Yeah, you're outdoors. It's clear right. when you're outdoors. I mean, it's a lot different. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm, st- I'm still, you know, we'll see. August first seems like a long way away, but you know, yep. it, it definitely tre- does. It's we'll definitely look- trending in the right direction. We'll throw. I like the Ronnie Perkins pick too, and Ramondre yeah. Stevenson. Yeah. I like that they did. They went on a lot of defense. I, I think Belichick knows his defense. I mean, that, very balanced here. That's what he's yep. the best at. He's a defensive specialist. He's not good at drafting receivers. He hasn't been good at drafting tight ends. Quarterback, he hasn't. Well, he's drafted a couple. And he's been okay at that actually. Um, so I, you know, have faith that uh, he did his research there. But I like that they went defense. I, I he's been good at drafting. Uh, you know, upfront defensive players, you know, they get Ronnie Perkins, who I think is a good defensive end. I like the running back pick, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. I was actually surprised they got another running back because they're pretty loaded at that position well, now. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things too there too, Tom is, is that, you know, Rex Burkhead and Sony Michelle get hurt a lot. And yeah. Rex Burkhead's coming off his, be- his best year as a Patriot, but he had a really bad injury. Sony Michelle seems to get hurt midway through the season. So I can't really, I guess I'm not really surprised that they did take it back. And then they also got James White back, which that surprised me too. I thought I they also de- declined sure. their uh, option on Michelle, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yes. I think they declined their. Yeah. yeah. So he's so, gone. I think so. Or is that for next year? I think it's for, next for this year. year or next year. I think, I think he's it's for next year. here this year, but I think next year he's gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it kind of seems like that. Again, he was a first round pick. I mean, just so much expectations when you're that first round pick. I mean, it's just, you know, and, and that's the thing. Can Mac Jones live up to that hype? Because we've right. seen it. I it mean, is it's hard. Look at Nikhil Harry. He's done, he's been terrible here as a first round pick. I think this is his last chance, honestly. If he doesn't get it this year, I hope he turns it around, honestly. I really hope he turns one, it around, a, but we'll he was see. A, ta- a number one first round pick. He's obviously got some talent, and I, I yeah. kind of like the guy, but it's I just do too. See, it's something he's missing. What is he missing? We Are they using him had, the wrong way? Maybe they're using him the wrong way or lining yeah. him up in the wrong spot. Yeah. We could have had DK Metcalf. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh I know. That hurts. That, that stings. Yeah. I mean, his um, first year, he wasn't bad. It was really after that that yeah it's just not been good but i think he's tough he goes over the middle he he's 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 a big receiver i didn't realize how big it's just something yeah. maybe he's yeah. just a slow starter i don't know here Man. we go we'll pull up the stats right here like his first year 2018 four and a half yards per carry it's pretty good oh we're uh, talking michelle not harry oh i thought we were talking about harry oh I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> we're Michelle. talking about somebody. We're talking All about something. Is, Nikhil Harry can help this team. If and maybe Jared's right. Maybe they're just not using him the right way. I don't know. No, I now, just I just think he's a train wreck. I just think he's no good. 
I mean, he did. You got to give more of a chance. I think you got to give him more of a chance. He's shown glimpses, right? You know, he's he showed a couple glimpses last year, and actually, I thought he had a decent connection with Cam Newton towards the end of the season. But Very high on him too. I don't Cam have Newton high hopes for him. But now we have other options. That's the other thing. So maybe they, maybe this is exactly what Nikhil Harry is. Maybe he's not that number one guy. But you got a guy in, like Kendrick Bourne, uh, Nelson Aguilar in here. Maybe Nikhil Harry kind of sneaks under the radar a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I certainly don't think he's the number one guy right now. Yes. No. He has no. a lot of work to do to get to that level. Um, but I think he will get better. You know, he seemed to Hopefully. even get a little better last year. Yeah, I mean, he can't really go anywhere but up. And if he doesn't go up, I think he's gone. I think they'll yep. trade him, get rid of him. Uh, but I think they're going to give him one more year, see if he can get better. And uh, if he doesn't get any better, he's gone after this year. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. But at least they have guys that can open up the field more. I mean, just imagine those formations where they got – Kendrick Bourne and Aguilar on the outside. They got both tight ends in there. Uh, they got Harris in the backfield. You're going to have a pretty open field. And if you have Harry in there, he's going to be the guy that's probably least covered. So the big thing with him, though, can he catch the ball? Can he catch the ball? Because he hasn't shown a lot of that uh, up to this point. He's had a lot of bad drops. And also, will they trust him out there? Right. They're going to give him a few yeah. shots, and if and Kill Harry is going to explode, it's going to be it's got to be this year because they actually have an offense this year, and I think that was the problem with the last couple of years. They have all these young guys; they don't have any weapons that can really spread out the field besides Edelman. But now they do. But now they do, right? Yeah, it's it should, it should be interesting because uh, again, but I also want to reiterate too that Buffalo is still a team to beat in the AFC East. They're, oh, definitely. We're, we're not quite – I still don't think we're better than the Bills yet because we yeah. haven't seen – we don't know about the quarterback. We know Josh Allen is good. I mean, are, are the Patriots better than Miami? I think they are, but, you know, I think they're better than the Jets, obviously. But – Yeah, I guess the one thing that worries me is, like, you know, you see Tua and he looks like he might be kind of a choke. Is it the same situation with Mac Jones? You know, getting the Alabama quarterback where they had all these weapons, they were loaded. Uh, and then you get their quarterback, and it's a more competitive league, obviously, more competitive games. You know, was oh. it the quarterback in Bama? Did he have an impact on that, or was it all receivers and running backs? Well, they, they, added a, they added an Alabama wide receiver to, to play with Tua. I mean, they drafted Jalen Waddell. So now right. you got Tua and Jalen Waddell. Um, and I thought – you know, I thought they had a they had a decent draft, but if we're talking other teams in the AFC East that had a decent draft, you have to look at the New York Jets. Um, they did have a good. You know, draft. again, and I mean, I'm not too still worried about the Jets, but I think if you look at what the Jets did in this draft, they addressed a lot of needs. Um, they got their franchise QB in Zach Wilson. They traded up and got an, uh, a really good offensive lineman, the kid from USC, uh, Vera Tucker. Um, and then they got that guy, Elijah Moore, the wide receiver from Ole Miss in the second round, which I thought was a great pick. I was hoping the Pats would maybe target him, um, you know, maybe trade up to get him. Um, so I think you got to like what the Jets did in this draft for sure. Definitely. Well, they addressed yeah. a lot of needs. I, yeah. Well, I think they made themselves better, but the question is, do they have the coaching? <laughs> right. It's always been the Jets problem. I mean, it's, you just, you just don't know, but I mean, clearly it looks like, at least all the teams in the AFC East are going to be somewhat competitive. Like, I don't think the Jets are a one in 15 team again. But oh, the East is getting better. It There's is. No doubt. They're, they're quickly becoming one of the most competitive divisions in football. Yeah. Um, I think Buffalo is still number one. I think the Pats are probably number two at this point. Miami is a close, very close third. And then you got the Jets, I think, that have uh, certainly improved this year. Yeah, and we never play well in Miami. It's no matter when they go down there, you just—it's always a always a problem for the Patriots. Last year, didn't they beat them down there? No, we lost down. They we we beat them here, and then we lost there in December. They just ah, they yep. just don't play well there. They never do. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. What a, it's just a weird place to play. You know, yep. I don't know the hot weather or something. 
too many distractions. I mean, I don't know. There's a, there's a nightclub in the stadium. I mean, it's like. <laughs> I've heard I it's, it's, a, I heard it's a very fun stadium to go to. Oh, yeah. My, my brother's been to some games. There. He said it's it's quite an atmosphere. It's 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 crazy. Oh, man. Yeah. That is a big travel destination for Pats. Though. Who did the Bills oh, yeah. take in the first round? The Bills. They picked towards. Oh, they, I think they took a defensive end. I will tell you in two seconds. Yeah, they picked towards the end, I believe. They uh, did. Yeah. They got Greg uh, Rosu out of Miami. Uh, so, okay. Defensive yeah. end. Which yeah, is something they needed. Bills certainly need a defense. Oh, they were a train wreck last year. I mean, they they had success. They won the division, but they only did that because they had such a powerful offense. Their defense, though, they started their off defense okay, was okay, and then they I wouldn't just, say their defense was a train wreck. Yeah, uh, not a train wreck. But whenever they played a high powered offense, they gave up a lot of points, like they did to Kansas City. And I think their defense was supposed to be kind of the backbone of the team, and it ended up being the offense because the Bills have always the Bills have had some good defenses the last few years. Yep. And but but it but the, you know, I still don't think they're better than Kansas City. I mean, the, the when, Bills, I mean, I still think Kansas City is still the team to beat in the AFC. It's, I feel like when the Bills played a team that had a so so offense, their defense was unbelievable. They wouldn't give up a lot of points. But whenever they played, you know, uh, Pat Mahomes or, of course, like uh, Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, they gave up a lot of points. They did. Yeah. And they, they need a, a rush. I mean, you know, I think it was smart that they took a defensive end. They don't need much offensively, they, no. they got a well built offense. It's very good offense, and it'll be in, it'll be interesting when the Patriots go up to Buffalo. It's, it's not an easy place to play, especially you know, now that the Bills are good, and you know it's um, it's not a slam dunk like it was when Tom Brady was here. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's going to be an interesting season for sure. Certainly will. I mean, you could have a Pats Jets game that is Mac Jones against Zach Wilson. Wow. <laughs> I know. Who would have ever thought? I mean, seriously, would have ever thought that? I mean, but it could happen. Or Mac Jones could. versus Tua in Miami. Yep. Yep. That could happen too. I mean, Bama against Bama. You just, you just, you just don't know. I mean, but um, I think Jones is better than Tua. I think Tua had an injury problem. I'm kind of glad the Patriots didn't go after him because I, I think he's just, you know, I mean, you can't control injuries, but it definitely just seemed like. Look, the Dolphins were desperate. They needed a quarterback. I mean, more so than the Patriots did. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, well, they did have Fitz Magic, but they, they did. He's with the Washington football team now. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I just think he's going to end up being the starter there. Wherever he goes, yeah. he starts off as the backup, but then he ends up being the starter. What? The and then he ends up stealing the starting job for a while, maybe a season. And he's then he's back on the bench. And then it just goes year. over and over again. The starter gets hurt, and Fitz Magic comes in and saves the day. 16th year now he's been in the league. That is just – I can't believe he's been in the league this 16 long. 16 years yeah. on 16 teams. <laughs> it's unreal. It's unreal. This guy is – what a career. I mean, I, I couldn't believe he's been in the league that long. It just – you know. But um, he seems like a decent guy. And, I listen, I think the Washington football team's pretty good. I mean, they're building something down there. And I just wonder if he lives out of a suitcase. <laughs> Probably. Like, does he ever get established? I mean, the guys no. don't move every year. Right. You know, but he's going to a pretty good team. The Washington football team is a better team than the Dolphins. Oh, I, I, nope. I, will, I will agree with that. They got a good offense. They have a really good defense. So we'll see what happens. They're easily the best team in that division. I think they are. I mean, in the NFC. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Cowboys, they if they should be competitive, but they haven't been. We don't know what Dak's going to look like. Prescott's going to like look like either. I mean, Philadelphia, I think they got something in Jalen Hurts. I think they're excited about that. We still don't know. Daniel Jones is, eh, I don't know. I mean, he's not bad, but the Giants have had a lot of problems too. But right now, Washington clearly is the best team in that division. There were some good draft picks in that in that yeah. in that in that uh, division, though. I mean, again, yeah. uh, you know, the Cowboys taking Micah Parsons. Obviously, they need to replace Sean Lee at middle linebacker, and he's a good player. Um, you know, the Eagles getting Devontae Smith, and mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, so yeah. that'll we'll see be what happens interesting. In that, Hurts uh, to Smith. Yep. And what's going on with Jim? Is, is Garoppolo done in San Francisco? You have yeah, who knows, man. I did want to get to this. I'm glad you brought who it knows? up. So they get Trey Lance right, and as soon as. Uh, 49ers drafted Trey Lance. I said, wow, there's a real chance Garoppolo ends up in New England. 
Uh, and now it looks like Garoppolo's going to stay and like try to mentor Trey Lance or something. I mean, wow. come on, give me a this break. This is going to be, I'm telling you, man, what this is like one of the weirdest things. Do him and Kyle Shanahan even talk? This is going to be one of the Probably strangest not. things I've ever seen, really. I mean, Garoppolo's contract is just too much to trade him. It's tough. I mean, they're paying that guy so much money. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think it's a given that Trey Lance is the starter on day one. I mean, I don't know if they already announced it or not, but I don't think it's a given. Uh, I think they, they could still start Garoppolo, wait for him to get hurt, because that'll probably happen, and then bring in Trey Lance. Could happen. I just I just don't see – Just it just it just seems like to me that Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo don't, don't even have a relationship. And it's really unreal. I mean, this was his guy. They were eight minutes away from winning a Super Bowl. Right. And, and I honestly, Kyle Shanahan needs to be blamed for some of that because he was horrendous down the stretch. Ford, and I know Ford. Jimmy Garoppolo made bad, but still, you need a co- – it just – I don't know. It just – something's not right there. I if mean, you're the 49ers, you got to remember that this guy, Jimmy Garoppolo, just brought you to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. And, all, and you almost won it. I mean – yeah. And you spent all this money on him. I think he's still what the highest paid quarterback in the league. Unbelievable. Are you really going to give up on this guy that fast? Seems like they are. Seems like it seems like they are to me. I mean, the, Jared, you probably, this, this is, I have never seen anything like this. If, if you're the, all right. Let's say you're the GM and you're in the 49ers position. Are you taking a, a quarterback with the third pick in the NFL draft this year? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> right. This is, it's crazy. I mean, really, I mean, there's a lot of question marks with Garoppolo. It's his injury history. Can the guy stay healthy? Clearly not. I mean, clearly not. Yeah. It's, it's just, uh, but you're right, Tom. I mean, that 49ers team a few years ago, they were a legit yep. team. They absolutely mauled Green Bay and Minnesota, and they outplayed the Chiefs for most of that game. Yeah until they stopped coaching and they stopped playing. I don't understand. They just didn't have that, that killer instinct in them, but the talent is there, but clearly there, there's just something that is not right. But yeah, I mean, I think the fact that they drafted a quarterback says something about the way that they feel about Garoppolo. Yeah. I, I mean, if they really, really liked Garoppolo and were really confident in him starting the season and being their starter throughout the season, they wouldn't have drafted a quarterback. Maybe they would have drafted Kyle Pitts or something. Yep. You know, imagine if you had Kyle Pitts and George oh, Kittle playing together. Man. Jesus. Right. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you know, some of the players on the crazy. on the Niners are are coming to Garoppolo's defense. It just seems like it's a divided locker room. And you know, we have our problems here in New England too, but I am so glad we don't have something like that. I mean, that yeah. is just oh no, I think they're gonna be a train wreck, the 49ers. I, yeah. I think they're gonna be it's a not looking good. Here. It's not looking good. I mean and that division's becoming tougher too. I think Arizona's going to be preloaded this year oh yeah mm-hmm. yep and then the you know the rams are always a tough out the right. 40 i mean the, the the seahawks will be good i mean it seems russell wilson's not going anywhere now i mean it, it, it well he it, might after this year if he maybe gets, if he gets beat up like he did last year i could picture him saying all right i'm out see ya i mean it could but i mean it's just uh maybe he goes to green bay if Aaron Rodgers leaves <laughs> Right. That would be ridiculous. Oh, my God. You put him in the Packers? Oh, man. That would be unreal. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Packers, questions. they got their draft pick from last year. Who was it? Uh, what's his face? The guy they drafted last year. And Rodgers was not happy about it. The quarterback, yeah. And then uh, now everyone's oh, reading Jordan into, Love. Yes. Now everyone's reading into the to the Buccaneers drafting a quarterback, too. I mean, like, come on. It's just, yeah. I just Tom remember Reed's... when they did that last year, the Packers, my jaw dropped. I'm like, yeah. you're kidding yeah. me. You're literally chasing Aaron Rodgers out of town. It seems like it to me. Yeah, well, clearly. And Aaron Rodgers is a guy who has relatively stayed healthy, and he's one of the best in football, and you're chasing this guy out of town. You, you should have got him a receiver. Who did, who you know they what? Fr- if they got that receiver last year instead of love, who knows? Maybe they would have won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Maybe. Who did, they, who did they take in the first round this year? I think they actually took a receiver. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. I believe it was a receiver. Yeah, uh, no, it was a cornerback. Eric Stokes. Oh, that's right. That's the only pick. Yeah, so they they did need help at cornerback, so that wasn't a horrible pick. I think it was round two they actually took a receiver. 
Yeah. Well. Round two, they took. Oh, no, they took a center, Josh Myers. All right, well, that's good. He needed a center. <laughs> Give Aaron Rodgers some protection. If he's still even, if he's still even there. If he's still, there. Yeah, I mean, he wants out. He wants to go host Jeopardy. Oh, God. Who knows? Please. If he wants out that bad, I mean, he could retire for a year. Yeah, I mean, I oh, was round three. They took Amari Rodgers from Clemson. They traded. What, what, what if together. what if he wants out of Green Bay and, and then he goes to San Francisco? I oh, know. Aaron Rodgers goes to the 40, 49ers. Oh my goodness! But well, I mean, he's from California. Trey Lance you know, he grew up Jimmy in California. <laughs> huh? Grew up in California. That's right. I mean, he's a California guy. Right. Yep. He is. Well, he could he go is. to the Chargers. Nice young Chargers. team over there. Uh, you know, I think there's a big market for Aaron Rodgers. I think there's a lot of teams oh, yeah. that would take him, even though he seems like uh, he has, um, you know, some personality issues. He's one of the most talented guys in the league. I, I think really any team would take him. Could go to Houston because Sean Watson's probably done there. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think anybody wants team. to go to Houston right now, though. That, no, Jared, that's a great point. That, that team's a that train wreck. Team is a, that disaster. team is a disaster. That they team no for. They Not had no first round game. picks and they got an F. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a pick till what the third round. Oh, how is that Good possible? Lord. And they're I mean, in the worst situation like ever. Yeah. They're the last team that uh needed to not have a pick in the first and second round. Unbelievable. Even, even Jacksonville, I think, is in a better shape than Houston is. I mean Jacksonville right. picked pretty well, I thought. Uh, yeah, I think they if Trevor Lawrence pans out, they're in business. Oh yeah. No doubt about it. And he seems like he's, you know, he seems like he's a, he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's already like, he's already in like the Jacksonville community. I mean, that's what they need. They, they just need someone like that. And, and, you know, uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think he, I think he does start in Jacksonville. I, it Definitely. could be Gar- Gardner Minshew, but I don't think it will be. I think mm-hmm. Lawrence is the guy. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I think so too. I think it will be Lawrence. I think they we play are very invested in him. And, and yeah, it won't be Minshew, especially after the last year. It's going to be Lawrence. I don't think they're going to be the worst team in the NFL this year. I think that's no. going to be the Texans. Oh, yeah. I think you're right, Jared. The I Texans think the Texans are, are going to be 0-16. Uh, the Lions will probably go 2-14. <laughs> wow. But they're going to bite some ankles over in Detroit. So, But the Aaron Rodgers rumors are just crazy. I mean, it really – because then there was another rumor that he, he was going to You know, if he really Browns. wants to put it in their face, he can go to the Lions. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. He goes to the Lions. Come and they on, win. man. No, I mean, no, it's not going to happen. But I could, I could definitely picture him going to Denver. And I think that yeah. was the, the two destinations he wanted to go to: is Raiders or Denver. I heard and Cleveland. Den- Denver traded for Bridgewater, but that doesn't mean they're not going to go after Aaron Rodgers. No, Rodgers I, I agree. Is miles above Bridgewater. Yeah, oh, <laughs> of course. I mean, but could you pitch? I mean, these rumors are crazy too. Every time you a star player, but can you picture him in Cleveland? I mean, that would just be – the Browns are a Super Bowl favorite. Yeah, they got Mayfield. I don't think – Yeah, but – I don't think they're going to take Rodgers. This never know. You know, whoever – wherever he goes, there's, they're going to have to work out the money because Rodgers is a mm. contract. That is true, Tom. Yeah. So, yeah, they'll have to work that out. But Cleveland having Mayfield, and they, they're already spending a ton of money on the group they have. I don't think they're going to do it. I think you got to think about – I mean – I think he probably wants to go to San Francisco, but maybe he doesn't want to go to San Francisco knowing kind of what the train wreck is like there right now. I mean, does he really want to play in this Kyle Shanahan, whatever, and deal this hoopla with Garoppolo and Trey Lance now? And Yep. Um, probably not. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, he went to Cal. He's from Northern California, um, you know, grew up there. And I don't think like San Francisco to play there, could but... even afford him, though. No. If they, if they get Jimmy G off the books, they could, but – that Jimmy G contract is huge. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. You know, that's a great point uh, that Jared made. I mean, no, he probably doesn't. I don't think anybody wants to go there right now. I mean, you know, it just he'd be better off going, uh, going just get, staying away from all that. You know, but well, maybe he does. You got one crap storm of a situation combined with another crap storm of a situation. Maybe you combine the two and maybe you make it happen. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I thought the Patriots might be in the running for him until they no. drafted Mac Jones, but no, no. not anymore. Definitely not. But anyways, uh, we are just about out of time. A little bit of a shortened show today, uh, just in case we have games. We didn't want to overlap too much. But, of course, 
even if the show did get cut off during the games, which on TV it may have if the games even happen, uh, you can catch the entire version on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. So, guys, it's been fun. Uh, any closing thoughts before we wrap it up? I think we touched on everything. How about Aaron Rodgers to Miami? <laughs> All right. Enough Aaron Rodgers talk. We're, we're done with that. That's, that's a good way to go on. Jeopardy. That's what's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> for uh, everybody at HCAM, for my guest Jared Keene, Andy Barron, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching HCAM Sports Talk Live. You can catch it every Wednesday at 3 p.m. right here on HCAM TV. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon.